all that uh, combined, we have roughly around 65.4 million um, in our bank, and that will be sustainable for our pipeline and operations throughout 2025 and lasting until um, uh, 2025. Hello and welcome back to the Proactive Australia studio. I'm Tyler Tully and today I'm joined by Imugene COO Brad Glover and CEO and Managing Director Leslie Chong, who are going to talk us through Imugene's recent updates, including its quarterly report and the $20 million it's received from CBI Investments earlier in the week. A lot to discuss today, both of you. Thanks for joining me today in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us. So let's get into it. I think a good place to start would be if you could give investors a bit of an update on Immugene's ongoing MAST and Oncolytics trials. Absolutely. So uh, the MAST study stands for Metastatic Advanced Solid Tumor Study. We have a BioTrack cancer patient, Colangio. So just what the audience needs to know is Colangio is one of those really tough cancer types. And there isn't much um, out there that's a Approved or studied. And I'm just proud to say that we have that cholangio cancer patients going on full remission for more than two years. So uh, we started an expansion with this. Um, we uh, we have dose, escal dose escalated or cleared the first initial safety cohort, and we're still continuing to enroll cholangio patients um, on upwards of 10 patients. And I'm also happy to report that we have secured a patent for our CF33 um, co uh, composition of use and composition of matter until 2040. And for Oncarlytics, I'm going to let Brad take it. Absolutely. For oncolytics, uh, we have completed the monotherapy in both the intratumoral IT and intravenous IV administrations. Uh, and we've now initiated the IT and IV combo enrollment with blinitubumab, which is a CD19 targeting bispecific antibody. Now, this is a dose escalation study, and we're currently at the lowest dose level uh, in this very exciting combinational trial. Thank you both for those updates. Brad, I'll direct the next one to you. What progress have you made with Azacel? Sure, sure. So uh, excitingly, the first Australian site at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney has just opened, uh, and we just recently uh, dosed the first patient there in early January. Um, our initial results uh, from U.S. sites are also very promising. Uh, we have three complete responses, uh, including two from cohort B patients, uh, those are those patients treated with azer cell lymphodepletion or a chemotherapy preconditioning and interleukin-2 or IL-2. Uh, and we plan to open up uh, to five sites in Australia to accelerate our enrollment and provide access to patients with limited treatment options. And can you bring us up to speed on your B-cell immunotherapy programs? Happy to. So Hervax is, uh, has completed and we are able to publish um, final results. And we just did that at the European Society of Medical Oncology Conference. PD-1-VAX continues on uh, to support a phase two investigator sponsor study. So this is a way of uh, getting data, but with, with um, limiting our resources and funding to access that data. And so it's in a really neat program called Neopolum, and that's, um, it's neoadjuvant, meaning it's before surgery, so PD-1-Vax is given to certain kinds of colorectal patients um, initially before they have surgery, and you get this nice debulking of uh, biopsy to look through, and also you can get results of how PD-1-Vax has uh, reacted to the cancer within 30 to 60 days. So we're quite excited for those studies to start in the UK as well as Australia um, in early 2025. And I'm going to let uh, Brad talk about the exciting um, uh, program, how it continues. Absolutely. You know, we went through a portfolio prioritization recently to make sure that we're deploying our capital effectively and really focusing um, our, our efforts. And so coming out of that, we've deprioritized our B-cell immunotherapies to really focus on azer cell and our oncolytic virus programs. And Leslie and I are jointly leading business development activities to continue out-licensing opportunities 
for our B-cell immunotherapies because we still believe there's a lot of value there. Thanks for that, Brad. Leslie, I'll direct this one to you. How is Immugene positioned financially? Uh, look, so we were able to announce on the funding, just the recent funding from our continuous supporters uh, at CVI. So we received $20 million, And uh, this is with zero interest conversion at 25% premium. So it was a really nicely done capital. Um, this uh, we also received the R&D rebate from um, fiscal year 2023, which was 11.7. So all that uh, combined, we have roughly around 65.4 million um, in our bank, and that will be sustainable for our pipeline and operations throughout 2025 and lasting until um, uh, 2025. But I want to also talk about we continue to look for savings within imaging to really prioritize our programs and data. So in 20, all of 2025, we're looking to support our programs through data um, outputs. Thanks for that, Leslie. Final question, Brad, what can we expect from Immugene in 2025? Absolutely. So as, as Leslie just laid out, we have that runway for 2025. We have that fiscal responsibility and 2025 becomes an exciting year for clinical execution and data. So we'll continue enrolling our patients into cohort B of the AZER cell trial, where we've already seen promising early results. Uh, for our CF33 PDL1 abstract, it's been accepted uh, for the AACR immuno oncology meeting in February of 2025, so next month. For Vaccinia, we'll continue to enroll in these expansion indications that Leslie mentioned earlier and progress our dose escalation to what's called the uh, optimal biological dose or OBD um, or the recommended phase two dose, RP2D. And for finally, for our oncolytics, we'll um, advance that program leveraging our oncolytic virus uh, that replicates within these cancer cells and kills them, all the while expressing the CD19 on the cell surface. And this approach makes tumors susceptible to approved CD19 targeted therapies, which really, um, you know, creates a powerful triple punch against solid tumors. Well, it definitely sounds like exciting times ahead for Immugene. Brad, Leslie, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us.